Hello YouTube and welcome to Network Playroom. Now in this video we're going to discuss the OSPF neighbor states. I'll list the states briefly and then we'll go over them in more detail. And as you can see I have a diagram on the screen from firewall.cx so you can follow that as I describe the OSPF neighbor states. So let's get to it. So the OSPF neighbor states are down, init, attempt, two-way, xstart, exchange, loading, and full. Now some of these are stable states and some are transition transitional. The two-way and full states are stable OSPF neighbor states. And if a router is stuck in any other state, it indicates a problem in forming adjacencies. And now let's look at each state more closely. So the down state is the first OSBF neighbor state, and it means that no hello packets have been received from the neighbor. And in a fully adjacent state, which is the last state, if the router doesn't receive a hello from the neighbor within the dead interval, or if the manually configured neighbor is being removed from the configuration, then the neighbor state changes from full to down. Now the next one is called attempt, and it is only valid for manually configured neighbors in a non-broadcast multi-access environment. So in the attempt state, the router sends unicast hello packets every poll interval to the neighbor from which hellos have not been received within the dead interval. So yeah, this state, the attempt state, applies only to NBMA networks. I know we haven't discussed the different OSPF network types yet, but we'll get to that at another time. But next up, the init state specifies that the router has received a hello packet from its neighbor but the receiving router uh, but the receiving router's ID was not included in the hello packet and when a router receives a hello packet from a neighbor it should list the sender's router ID in its hello packet as an acknowledgement that it received a valid hello packet so you can see that um, here in this phase. So you can see that the scene is null, so its own router ID is not listed. Okay, next, the two-way state designates that bidirectional communication has been established between the two routers. Now bidirectional means that each router has seen the other's hello packet. Now this state is attained when the router receiving the hello packet sees its own router ID within the received hello packet's neighbor field. And this is a stable state. And you can see that here. So R2 is sending a hello packet to R1 and it's listing the router ID of R1 in its packet. So now R1 knows that R2 has seen the hello packet from him. Um, okay, so this there's another thing to the two-way state. So here the router decides if it's going to become fully adjacent with the neighbor. And this, again, depends on the OSPF network type. And on broadcast and non-broadcast multi-access networks, a router becomes fully adjacent only with the designated router and the backup designated router. And it stays in the two-way state with all other neighbors. But on point-to-point -point and point-to-multipoint networks, the router becomes fully adjacent with all connected routers. And at the end of this state, the DR and BDR 
for broadcast and non-broadcast multi-access networks are elected. So we haven't talked about the designated router and backup designated router yet either because that concept really applies to these two types of OSPF network types which I haven't introduced yet but that's uh, enough to know for now just that the uh, DR slash BDR election happens in this state in the two-way state okay let's proceed so once the DR and BDR are elected the actual process of exchanging link state information can start between the routers and their DR and BDR. And this is when we move to the X start state. So the routers and their DR and BDR establish a master slave relationship and choose the initial sequence number for adjacency formation. So establishing the master and slave roles is key to the packet flow. The router with the higher router ID becomes the master and starts the exchange and as such is the only router that can increment the sequence number. So in our scenario here, R2 has the higher router ID so it will become the master and R1 will be the slave. Okay, moving on. So next is the exchange state uh, where OSPF routers exchange database descriptor or DBD packets. So database description, description packets contain the link state advertisement headers only and describe the contents of the entire link state database. Now we've discussed this in my previous videos I've gone in a lot of detail to describe the different packets so you can go back to view those videos if you want to refresh your memory about the details of these packets uh, but yes so each uh, dbd packet has a sequence number which can be incremented only by the master and is uh, explicitly acknowledged by the slave. So then the routers also send uh, link state request packets and link state update packets, which contain the entire LSAs. So basically in the XStart phase here, this is where the routers decide the master and slave roles and in the exchange state here's where the dbd packets flow and then we move on to the loading state which is the actual exchange of link state information and based on the information provided by the dbds the routers send link state request packets. So if you remember from my previous videos, the DBD packets contain the LSA headers. And if the router sees that the neighbor has more recent information or it has some more LSAs that the router itself doesn't have, it requests those LSAs in a link state request packet. And the neighbor then provides the requested link state information in link state update packets. And during the adjacency, if a router receives an outdated or missing LSA, it requests that LSA by sending a link state request packet. And all link state update packets are acknowledged. So here in the loading state is really where the LSA exchange happens. And then finally, we move on to the full state in which routers are fully adjacent with each other. 
So all the router and network LSAs are exchanged and the router's databases are fully synchronized. And full is the normal state for OSPF routers. So here, let me just mark a little star here. Two-way and full are stable OSPF states. The others are transitional. Okay, so now let me summarize what we've talked about. And I'll write a brief description of each state on the screen here. So let's start with the first one, which was the down state. So this was basically that no hellos. Oh. Uh, have been received from the neighbor. So no hellos from neighbor. And I'm gonna jump over attempt because it only applies to NBMA networks. So we'll go straight to init. And this meant that the router has received a hello from the neighbor, but it did not see its own router ID in the packet. So received hello from neighbor, but did not see own router ID. And then we have the two-way state. And this can be summarized as uh, bi-directional communication is established and own router ID is seen. And this is where the possible DR slash BDR election also happens. Okay. So bidirectional communication established. And seen on Right, router ID. And then also let's put the possible DR slash BDR election. Okay, so next, X start. And this was the master slave election. This is where the master and slave roles are established. And next we had the exchange state. And this is where routers exchange the DVD packets and the master is leading the packet flow. DVD exchange. led by master. And then loading. And in this state, the neighbors exchange LSAs. So we'll write that neighbors exchange 
LSAs. And finally, the full state. This is where the LSA exchange is complete and the databases are fully synchronized. LSA exchange is complete. And databases are fully synchronized. Fully synchronized. Okay, that's it about the OSPF neighbor states. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.